Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Game, and a sub email on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Moonlight Castle. So y'all, before we jump into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> He also included a picture of them together, but I guess she'd most likely be she'd most likely be unrecognizable. Can I ask a question regarding this thing right here? Clyde brought us back to the map, addressing one of the handwritten notes Liam added, something called a safe room followed by multiple question marks. It's technically a clean space free of ghosts that we could use to rest and recharge. I see, and why is it written like that? I'm not sure of where it could be. That's why you see those question marks. I have something important to say. Yes? Let's say I found your sister. What do you want me to do afterwards? You leave her where she is. Wait for me in the safe room and I'll do the rest. Alright, I get the gist of things now. He does? I still find this insane. Uh, hopefully I'm not the one who finds her. I also wrote some more hypothetical scenarios you guys can read while Ryan drives us back to the castle. We walked in my, we walked in my, he walked in my direction and handed me a similar looking bag to the one I saw yesterday. I didn't exactly register the situation properly and just took it off his hands, only for the bag to drag me down with its weight. Why is it so heavy? Ryan came to my rescue and took, it, took this boulder away from me. It's really not. All right, being indirectly called a weakling sure was nice. Let Ryan carry it then, and don't worry about it. I raised my hand toward, towards the bear. I can... I can take it, no problem. Patrice began chuckling upon hearing that, Ryan flushed red. You're such an idiot. Are we going to split again like yesterday? For sure, but if that doesn't reassure you guys, I'll take a look around first to double check whether it's safe. Silence. We didn't say anything. It was a lot to take in considering how much we'd heard already today. I wouldn't blame anyone if they, if they ever decided to step away now that we were about to leave. That is, if anyone believed what he had told us. And it felt as though we were passively taking it all in without actually understanding the situation. I was strangely drawn to the castle and didn't understand why. Was everyone else experiencing this feeling too? Time to depart, correct? Clyde took a deep breath, clutching his bag closer to his chest. I'm supposed to return this book tonight. That means I can't run away from this. Are you sure? I feel like you're trusting Liam too easily. Blake, you didn't see what I saw. He might be telling the truth after all. Let's not spoil the night. I'm not discussing this in front of everyone. Things between them were still tense regardless of how hard they tried to look casual about it. I understand. Clyde inhaled and exhaled, letting out small puffs of smoke and ashes. Allow me to be honest with you, Blake. I need the opportunity to do what's right instead of having my path blocked. I will give you what you want, but it has to be delivered my way. He surprised us all with that response, Blake included. His words hung in the air, leaving the wolf stunned. I disagree, but you're the one in charge. Anyhow, I'm here right now, so get a clue already. He pulled out a cigarette and walked away. We both noticed a slight shift in his demeanor. Clyde's words did matter, and he thought so, too. Ryan looks smug, wearing an obvious I told you so on his face. I'm going to pack our things, Dylan. I'm going to pack our things. Dylan! Just say what you want me to do. Take it now. Mmm. God, that is so good. Once again, y'all, Bing Energy. Bing, if you want to sponsor me, I'll definitely be up for it. The crocodile scoffed and hurried out after him. I'll join you soon. Clyde left as well, but walked through a different exit to be alone. Can I have the short version? I feel like everyone here knows what's going on with him but me. Russell smiled, giving away that he was informed as well, leaving Patrice the odd one out. I need to talk with the owner. It was just me, Ryan, and Patrice now. Have you heard about the stray cat incident? The one that happened last year? Of course I do. Everyone knows about it. I rolled my eyes. Sorry for not keeping up with the latest news. It sparked an argument... Between them, because Blake blames Liam for it, and Clyde disagrees. I don't remember Clyde telling us that. That's because I snooped around a little. Blake thinks Liam gave him that scar. Can you believe him? Ryan shrugged, choosing not to side with either of them. I don't know. Sounds realistic. Wouldn't put anything past Liam. I don't think Liam did that. You don't? He was confident about it. I mean, I had to deal with that little shit for years. He's not the violent type. Like, bro, he's super weak. You could easily step on him. He'd never try to fight back. 
Ryan was wearing an evil grin on his face, and we both knew what he was thinking about. Please don't step on people. Oh, I'd never. We don't believe you. Not on purpose, at least. Don't be silly. Should I check on Clyde? It's been a minute. He used to... He could use a reminder, just in case. We'll see what the others are, go are doing in the meantime. Blake was in plain sight, leaning against a pole, smoking a cigarette while staring at the moon. A small puff of smoke came out of his mouth and rose up into the sky after inhaling the fumes. I take it that we're going. There was a tinge of sadness in his voice. He took another long drag of his cigarette, finished the entire thing, and discarded it in a small trash bin nearby. I wanted to say something, but it felt inappropriate. Ryan placed his paw on my shoulders and he watched Blake enter the car, and I added mine on top of the, on top of his. I'm sure he's been thinking about it. I know, I just wish we could speed it up. I feel you. Dylan started honking, giving us an giving us an absolutely unnecessary scare. I want to leave! He continued to honk the horn, and he most likely wouldn't stop until we joined him. I pinched the bridge of my nose, annoyed. <sighs> we have been needing some noise. That's what I... That's what I prevented last time. I'll get him away from the driver's seat. Ryan rushed toward the car and I followed after him. The two were pushing each other, trying to take control over the seat. It surprised me how much Ryan struggled to get the upper hand. Dylan must have been really tough considering he easily out he easily outpowered Patrice. I would, I would never want to be on his bad side. We're here! We're here! Patrice joined us with Clyde in tow. The dragon, silently, the dragon silently seated himself in the corner, away from everyone else and opposite to Blake. Ryan managed to pull Dylan out in those seconds of hesitation from the others arriving, and so the squabble ended. Everyone's seated. You can drive now. Mm, stuff is potent. I placed myself in the front next to Ryan, just like yesterday, and after a few hiccups and the car started, we drove back to the forest. Not everyone was talking. Some voices were missing. Clyde and Blake didn't engage in any conversation, just watched the scenery go by. Oh, you, how are you doing? I gave him a subconscious smile. Just seeing that he noticed and asked me was reassuring me. Don't get distracted. You haven't learned the route yet. Yes, I did. Tell him, Patrice. He tends to memorize roads fast. Can't say the same for school material, though. You could have stopped at the compliment. Patrice leaned forward, placing his head between us. You're always fishing for those, but I'm the wrong person. Ryan blushed and, when he had a chance to freely move his hand, pushed him back to his seat, grumbling words under his breath I couldn't catch. Be careful. He deserved it. I found him cute. The way he reacted was one of the things I liked the most about him, especially how, by looking at me, he'd calm down and smile back. The campsite wasn't far, and with a few minutes left of traveling, I wanted to go back to Liam's book and read more of the flavor text in the back he mentioned. Oh, I see. Ryan briefly glanced over in my direction and saw what I was doing. I wonder how he came up with all that in such a short amount of time. I spent some time reading and discovering generic ghost trivia that personally didn't convince me, but it was interesting nonetheless. It was creative, at least. I wanted to hear about the colors. Does it say why some are blue and others are red? It reminded me I also wanted to check that out. I skimmed through the pages and found the flavor text I was looking for. The book says that red ghosts are evil, vengeful, and can't distinguish friend from foe. It's best to avoid them entirely or pay the consequences. Well, that wasn't so bad. I understand that perfectly. Making it too complicated, my ass. Blue ones instead don't care about you and can be approached with caution. It's recommended to avoid confrontation regardless. I'd love to chat with a ghost. I'm adding that to my bucket list. It says that you shouldn't, because they can turn into red ghosts under certain circumstances. I feel like everything in that book wants to kill you somehow. Liam wrote it. Exactly my point. Can we drop the ghost talk now? It's not bad yet, but I'm growing uncomfortable. Oh, sorry, I didn't think you were listening. I just noticed the car had gone quiet. We must have been the only ones talking at this point, so it was basically impossible not to not listen to our discussion. We've arrived! There you go. I walked out and stretched a little. There was a strange smell in the air I couldn't quite define. Ryan waited for everyone to exit the car before locking it. It took our bag for the time being until the bear was ready to hold it. We gotta walk through that forest, huh? It was an awkward trail. Very easy to lose your footing and hurt yourself. Stay close to Dylan, then. He can easily hold you. It got me thinking about all the possible scenarios I came to the conclusion that Dylan wouldn't save anyone. Or if he truly tried, he'd reach for any part of your body within grab range, making the rescue look awkward and uncomfortable. Somehow I feel safer alone. I also don't feel like tripping tonight. Just watch, or just watch where you step. You'll be fine. Ooh, that's beautiful. We walked through the main path and reached the old, campsites, the old campfire site. 
This place felt nostalgic for some reason. It's only been one day, yet it didn't feel like that at all. I wanted to go back to that night. Everyone looked so much happier then, didn't they? Okay, get closer now. I'd rather not lose any of you before reaching our destination. The bushes and leaves rustled as he pushed them out of the way to make space for us. At first, my nose could barely pick up that strange odor, but now it was growing stronger and more present. I had no idea what it was, but I personally didn't like it. It was something I've never smelled before. Can you smell that? Smell what? Food? I narrowed my eyes, annoyed. No. And that's no, that's no here, too. His nose was sharper than mine, so I'd expected him to say something about it. Can you hallucinate smells? Is that even possible? I managed to get through the forest without slipping this time around. The old rusty gate was just a few steps away, so we took a small break to rest and gather up. I was happy to see Blake approaching Clyde to check on him. It's always hard to keep pretending to be upset. When you love your friends, those negative feelings never last too long. Tired? A little. I can keep going. I walked up to the main group but slowed down in my tracks to observe Dylan and Liam instead. They were usually a bit further away from us while staying in close proximity. Dylan was holding his nose, just like I, just like I was before. He must have been feeling it, as, feeling it as well. You guys done catching your breath? Let's get inside already. Liam was growing impatient, just like last time. It was the only occasion, uh, the only occasion where I've ever seen him truly upset. The castle's towers were now fully visible as we got closer to the main entrance. I remember that old fountain of de full of debris, built exactly in the middle of what could have been a small plaza of the pa in the past. We walked through, ignoring everything around us to get inside. My body shivered when a chilling wind began blowing behind us, almost trying to push us in. It wasn't raining, at least. Liam pushed the door open, making us hear the awful creaking noise again. A putrid, disgusting smell welcomed me when I stepped into the lounge. It was unbearable, so strong and pungent I was tearing up, and breathing through my shirt did nothing. Dylan began cursing out loud, only for a sudden coughing to stop him. This is bad. This atmosphere. This place wasn't the same anymore. I could tell something happened here while we were gone. What was that smell? I had never smelled something so rancid before. It's like, it's like rotting, expired food? No, that would never be so powerful. You okay? Why are you holding your shirt like that? Uh-oh, spaghetti. Now it says Ryan A, so there's a Ryan B path too. Interesting. You, you don't feel it? Feel what? I glanced over my friends and realized that not everyone was affected. It was impossible to ignore you, even if you tried. I don't know, ghosts had it, no, I didn't know ghosts had an odor. This shit is gonna make my nose bleed. Is this one of those things normal people can't sense? I'm content with not knowing. And describe it to me. Of course I don't smell. This is... Liam held his tongue, uncertain about revealing that information. The ground's moving! An earthquake? Everyone, out, now! Wait, don't leave! Liam tried to keep the group close to him, but that didn't make sense. It wasn't safe for us to stay inside, not until the shaking had stopped. It started weak, but slowly built its way up to a strong, violent movement, the kind that wouldn't let you walk without tripping. I don't want to die! Patrice was horrified, and before anyone could get out, shoved us out of the way to attempt to leave first. He had worked so hard to not panic, but nothing could have prepared him for a natural calamity. Another person, faster than Patrice and agile enough to not lose balance, sprinted past all of us and tackled the tiger down. Stay the fuck here! Alright, I'm gonna go pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate the support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our Gold Tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our Not Safe for Work content as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I shall see y'all in the next video. Bye bye